So we use AI music on this show. The intro is AI. The outro is AI. We've had a lot of fun with AI music. I enjoy making AI music for silly stuff. I know you do too, Perry. You've made some very funny songs. Right. Uh, but it is kind of undeniable that it is not great for actual musical artists, the uh, influx of AI music in terms of people who made their living right. off of royalty-based music production, which is in a lot of times stock artists and other things, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. One of my favorite YouTubers is named uh, Ben Jordan with two N's, and he is an audio engineer, a musician. Uh, his, his channel description is, hi, I'm Ben. I'm into music and science. Sorry about my eyebrow. Uh, which is very funny. He has like an, an eyebrow scar that makes it so he has like two on his left eyebrow. He makes incredible content. Nice. It's a lot of fun. But recently he's been working on a project called Poisonify, which is an AI uh, music poison pill that makes music uh, not only untrainable or unlearnable, but it attacks like the very classification of what an AI hears in the piece. And mm -hmm. I want to walk us through how we get there. He did this great video on it that we'll link in the description, and we're going to peek at uh, two short segments of that real quick. So are you, have you heard of adversarial noise? You remember when all these voice assistants yeah. came out, right? Here's a, here's a little primer from his video just about adversarial noise and the kinds of things you can do using it. But meanwhile, I had been researching a type of technology that actually isn't all that new, adversarial noise. This term first sprouted up a decade ago when virtually every piece of technology included a little AI assistant that you could talk to. The infosec industry has been aware of this for a while now, as the information that a neural network gathers from a sound is very different than what a human brain gathers. This means that just about anything that you can accomplish via a voice command, like ordering something on Amazon or opening your garage door, can presumably be triggered by a sound that human human beings cannot identify, and this is accomplished by using adversarial noise. Let me demonstrate. Here's an attack on an Amazon Echo Show, which by the way is like the worst tech device that I've ever used in my life. Let's just play some soft classical music in the background and whoopsie. Ben Lee Jordan, born October 28, 1979 is an American musician operating under many pseudonyms. Here's my attack on the AI model that's been used for speech recognition by Meta, Facebook, Instagram, Oculus, and then a whole lot of others as well. If we run it directly, we can see exactly what the AI thinks that it's hearing. So he's got it into a transcription thing right now, this piano piece. And what the AI hears is in that piano, the AI is picking up, Alexa, open the garage door and kill the lights. Then unlock the gun safe and poison the guard dogs and get me out of bed and handcuff me to a chair and put duct tape on my mouth. All of that text is encoded just in that boot up, boot up, boot up. I love this so much. It's this great. This is so cool. So that's adversarial noise. Like, so he's buried that, uh, those kinds of instructions inside of this, this audio. Now, I, I do want to just step back and talk a little bit more about Ben Jordan and where he comes from, because lest anyone think he's just like an AI hater, he's also the person that started Voice Swap, which is an AI company that uh, you can change your singing voice using AI. They paid a bunch of singers and artists to create high quality voice models, and you can use like a voice to voice plugin and use them in your songs. You can even collaborate with them through this platform. And what's cool is that they, to do this, they trained their own proprietary model on licensed data, brought the artists into the equity of the company, and like their licensing models, they pay 50% of pro rata gross subscription income and 80% gross on license income. And so they've been pretty successful with this. Uh, so Ben is not anti-AI. He's really into the field. And uh, once he started working on this adversarial noise and poison pilling thing, he's not trying to kill AI music in general. He's just trying to protect artists is the idea behind this. Um, Harmony Cloak is a group that he went and partnered with. He goes into this in the video as well, which I will link. But uh, they have some great diagrams on their screen. So when you feed audio into an AI system, it's not actually looking at the sound waves. It's not listening to them. It is looking at the spectrogram of the sound waves, which actually I have a live spectrogram going of, the sh of us right now, which is a graph of frequency uh, over time. So as it's scrolling, you just you can see if you look at the screen, uh, if you're listening to the podcast, you can't see anything, but this just looks like a bunch of lines moving from left to right as time goes on. But if I go, you can see I just drew, I just drew like a nice hill. So it's mapping the frequency on the vertical axis. And this is what an AI actually is looking at. It just looks at it for a music file and learns the patterns from this, just like a diffusion image model. So these AI music models are actually image models at their core, just trained to process these spectral images to generate audio. So 
if you take the spectral image of clean music and you add in some of this defensive noise that encodes whatever you want, you can cloak it you know, in the original sound and the AI will be able to pick it out. But because it is at such a low level, it doesn't interfere with the actual aural uh, perceived sound at all, which is how you can bury these things. It's similar to like Nightshade or Glaze, where it, it tries to confuse the AI model and make it so that they uh, cannot uh, generate anything based off of it or learn off of it. So just as an example, here's a, uh, a song without any harmony cloak. It's kind of a silly little beat. That's jamming. I'll add harmony cloak onto it, or they added harmony cloak onto it. This is what it sounds like. I don't know if it'll necessarily Sounds come across. Yeah, it has a little bit more stereo width. That might get lost in the re-encode as we upload this to YouTube. So check it out mm. yourself if you want. But then here's what happens. When they trained uh, um, the MuseGAN model and they used that as input, when you add Harmony Cloak, it can't understand Ooh, it at this all. It's very discordant. Yeah. So Harmony Cloak is focused on screwing up the interpreted relationship between like harmony and song structure and pitch, but it still was obviously able to classify the right instruments and timbres for the instruments. So what Ben did is he created Poisonify to use in conjunction with this, which is a an instrument classification attack. So Ooh, okay. the, uh, you know, music stem separators, how they can like split music into guitar, yeah. trumpet, whatever, by knowing the timbres of those instruments and like their sound signature. Uh, using these same adversarial noise techniques, but on the classifying of the instruments. And he doesn't reveal exactly how he's done this, I think for obvious reasons, because he's still like uh, in the process of spinning this up. But here's a demonstration from the same video, another short clip of what happens when he has fed something that he poisonified into Suno AI. Sounded on Suno has a really useful feature where you can upload a song and then the service will automatically extend it. It doesn't seem to listen to prompts very well and it doesn't sound very good, but it does provide a great test bed for my little project here. So here we go. We can upload my original song here. And now here is Suno's AI extension of that song. It's, it's captured the vibe. Uh, ben on camera oh, yeah. walks away to go throw up. Obviously didn't like okay, it. Okay, now let's upload my <laughs> Poisonify encoded track. Sounds the same. And here is Suno's AI generated extension. Yeah. So I would yeah. describe very effective at masking the content of the song to the AI detection. I can still hear the second one in an elevator, though. Seems, <laughs> yeah. It seems fairly appropriate there. It does. It has elevator vibes, but it really, it managed to hide the vibe and the the instrumental timbre of it, too, very well. Right. Um, what's interesting is that the way that these things get encoded, it makes me think about, like, MP3s, but in reverse. Like, an MP3 file t takes a, uh, an audio file is a huge file. It's a lot of data making a, dis a crazy waveform. An MP3 file can throw away, like, 80 to 90% of that data and still sound close to the same to our human ears because it is aware of psychoacoustically what we'll perceive and can throw away stuff that we right. won't. And this is like the inverse of that, putting in stuff we won't perceive, but will be perceived by something else. Uh, and so combining Poisonify, which attacks instrument classification with Harmony Cloak, which attacks the like uh, pitch structure and harmony, you can really, you can make it absolutely impossible to train on this this music and there's possibly even knock-on effects that make the models worse if they were to continue training on this similar to like when people were talking about nightshade and, and glaze and things like that and uh ben wants to turn this into a service that people can use to poisonify and protect their music before they upload it computationally however it's very expensive and uses quite a bit of power i think he said it was like 400 minutes of compute for one minute of audio to be encoded through this oh, wow. so they're working on that, um, but Ben ends the video, or doesn't end the video, but near the end of the video has a quote that I really love where he said, developing a useful tool will pay out much higher than developing an investment scheme. And so like, that's his sort of approach to creating these sort of things. And that's I, a great I, quote. I really got to respect him, but uh, I want to know, what do you, what do you think of this? What's your thoughts? Um, I love the technology and the ingenuity behind it. Uh, I see the artistic value for sure in the protection of IP. Um, 
they're doing it in a way that's not destructive to any of the platforms. So I don't think there's any legal issues with doing that. So I think that all that is good and uh, protective. I'm still like, my brain is completely fixated on the first example where he was playing the piano music and, and making that hack the Alexa. Oh yeah. Um, because I'm just wondering like if, if, if an artist were to start doing that in the stuff that they upload to Spotify, what could they do? Like, could they make everybody's Alexa just start freaking out? Unlocking could doors they, and stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. Could they unlock doors? Like what kind of adversarial attacks could you do with that? If, um, or maybe I'm an adversary and I get access to the canned music that a Walmart plays. Ooh. What can I potentially do there or an office building that I want to get into? What could I do there? I don't oh. know. I'm going to have to go in and, and see if I can mock up some of that. You'll really stuff. like this video too, Perry, because uh, there's a part in the middle. It's a 27 minute video. Every minute of it is great. Halfway through, he talks about um, systems that are keyed to only work on a specific person's voice can also be intercepted by these systems that yeah. uh, morph it using what seems like real world deflections and tricks those. So like, yeah, he goes even more in depth mm -hmm. in the full video. Definitely a great watch, but I agree. I think poison pilling stuff to avoid being trained on is a bit of a fool's errand inherently. I think it's a great way to make a statement. I think the technology is interesting, but yeah, I, what, what really stuck out to me was the first, the hacking example, the more yeah. devious use. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it is, it's kind of like a watermark uh, in that you're you're able to use it. It kind of disrupts the, the flow. Um, it makes a statement. Uh, again, I don't think it's pushing any legal boundaries to where they would get sued for doing it. Um, and so if you're really worried about your intellectual property, then that may be good. I don't know that it stops the, uh, you know, the, the onslaught of what's coming when it comes to AI generated music. But at least, you know, that your stuff is not being copied or expanded upon. Yeah, I think from a from a technological exercise, it's neat. But yeah, the practical application it's is really cool is tech. Yeah. So uh, check yeah. out the video. That'll be linked in the description and the show notes. And then we've got another piece of, would you call this next segment cool tech, Perry? How would you <laughs> would you say? How would I call it? this? This next one is another dumpster fire of the week, but it solves a problem that I think a lot of people are, are trying to deal with, which is like, how do I consistently stay in touch with people that I have a hard time staying in touch with? Um, or where my, you know, my schedule is just too busy and I can't, you know, call my mom. Um, what do we do with that? Hmm. Well, AI has an answer. It's a charity. It's good. 